the lion's share of the of the blame of, of this loss is on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, defensively, you know, I think it was a little bit of a mixed bag, uh, to be honest, a mixed bag of good play, pretty good defensive play, okay play, and just some bad play. I think, um, you know, in terms in terms of the the health, you know, you got you got some guys back that wasn't really hadn't been playing. A whole lot as of late. Um, you've got DJ Graham. You've got uh, Willie Washington back. Um, I think Key Lawrence was, you know, exposed a little bit, just in terms of nothing, nothing terribly bad, but just in terms of his um, lack of experience at the position. At the position. Um, but I think the one thing that continues to be a problem for this team is um, missed tackles, which we saw a bunch of that, and getting pressure on the quarterback still wasn't able to do uh, to do that, you know, as well as they really they need to be need to do. So, um, so in in the end, um, you give up almost 300 yards rushing um, to a team that's pretty good, and I think, and, and we'll get into that in terms of just kind of talking about the um, the outlook. Uh, you know, for this t- this year's team in the program, just overall. So, uh, and then you know, very uncharacteristic. I don't think it really uh, ended up meaning too much in terms of the game. I think it would have ended about the same. Uh, but uh, Gabe Burkett even missed a couple of, of field goals in this game. Um, Michael Turk was still excellent from a punting perspective, but uh, but yeah, overall, I, I think it was. Not incredibly surprising for me, you know, watching, um, I, I kind of, to a, to a certain, to a certain extent, you know, kind of, kind of saw this coming. I, I think, you know, the Oklahoma team was not, has not really been good, um, all year, to be honest with you guys. Um, and, um, and it, and it kind of showed, you know, this, and it's not like one of these, it's not like a game that, you know, Oklahoma's, you know, not played well in a couple of games. They've not really been a great football team all year, um, you know, to be honest. When it started with Tulane, uh, a team that's only won one football game all year um, that Oklahoma struggled with, quite frankly. You, you know, you could make a case that they were fortunate to win. Um, Nebraska, you know, kind of the same way. Um, and then it kind of goes on and on and on, you know, um, well, you know, fortunate to win a lot of these games that they were um, much better talent wise now that they're, you know, the, the talent level is either more even or not really at the same level that it has been, you know, that it has been, then, um, then this is what you get. You know, you got the same production against a much more talented team on the road. Um, and then you got, the, you, you got what you have. Um, and then, so Oklahoma has two, you know, Two games. I thought, honestly, I don't think this is going to make anyone feel better. I thought coming into this game, this Baylor team was um, probably was the most winnable of the three. You know, I didn't certainly didn't think that Oklahoma um, couldn't win all three, but of the three, if you were if you're going to go in terms of which teams were which games were most winnable, I kind of gave this number one um, Iowa State this week, number two, and then Oklahoma State number three. Uh, so it doesn't get any easier by in by all all intents and purposes. It, it gets harder. I know that Iowa State, you know, is it has been is a little bit down based on where they where you, where we thought that they would be this year um, coming into the season. So um, it's a it's a situation where um, where Oklahoma has to get much better in just one week. I think one thing that was very um, very bizarre is that the game plan was a little bit weird for me. So, um, so that's my thoughts on the game. I have more thoughts really just kind of in what's going on with this team. What's, you know, what's, what's the outlook of, of the program. So just kind of getting into that, I think I, I'm judging this based on Oklahoma being a team that should be a perennial, a perennial playoff national championship conversation program. No, they're not going to get, make the playoffs every year. No, they're not going to challenge for a national championship every year. But they need to be in a conversation every year. And I think this year, more than any, a lot of a lot of people, including myself, that thought that Oklahoma um, had a, a really really strong opportunity uh, to make it to a uh, not only to make it to a playoff, but to make it to a national championship game based on what Oklahoma had back on defense. 
what they were returning offensively as well at the skill the skill position um, perspective. So I, I think when I preface a lot of these comments, it will be, um, you know, it will re, it will strongly be based upon that. So just some notes that I have kind of taken taken and listening to a couple of people that that know X's and O's a little bit better than I do is, you know, if, if you guys go listen to Teddy uh, and Gabe Iker's podcast, um, they do just a tremendous job getting in the weeds and breaking this down and, and people that obviously that I trust that are closer, you know, to the program than I am. But, you know, I think this is one thing that Gabe Iker has talked about. They, they're, they're a little bit too complicated on the offensive side of the ball, whether it's they just – this is Lincoln Riley system. Um, just the, the run schemes that they have in the blocking, you know, a lot of gap scheme. They don't do a whole lot of zone, a whole lot of stretch plays that pretty much every team in the country does. Oklahoma's um, offense is very particular, very um, sophisticated. And, and I think it's showing itself now that they don't maybe have the same talent that they've had in the past. Uh, recruiting on the offensive line hasn't been, been as good as it's been in the past. So, I think when you look at those things, guys, it's 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 a it's a situation where Oklahoma has not been anywhere near um, as talented, and they they've not been as effective the last couple of years running the football. This year has been one of the worst, you know, that they've had since Lincoln Riley and being able to run the football. Um, you know, last year was down for a good part of the year. They they picked it up a little bit middle to end, um, but then even the year before, I mean, Jalen Hurts helped it, but it wasn't. Um, you know, but it wasn't a great running team. So that's the bread and butter. That's what sets up this offense. And it's, you know, whether it's, you know, Gabe used the comment being too cool. Um, but so, so I think that's, that's part of it as well. Um, you know, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of scheme um, issues that, that you can look at, whether it be the offensive line or whether it be kind of the play calling, um, whether it be um, what Oklahoma is trying to do. Like, like, for example, Oklahoma kept trying to throw the ball deep. Um, the intermediate intermediate passing game, you know, really was non-existent. There was just a lot of deep throws, and um, for whatever reason, um, Lincoln Riley just kept going to that. And 